All right, uh, now I'm going to show you how to take a black and white drawing that you've either photographed or scanned into the computer, convert that into a black and white image, and then take that into Illustrator and use Image Trace to convert this into a vector file. Uh, you want to start by having Lightroom, Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator open. Beginning with Lightroom, I'm going to edit it to get it as close to black and white as possible. So start by pressing D on the keyboard, which will take you to the develop module. Then press R on the keyboard, which will bring up the crop module. You want to make sure that this padlock is unlocked, which will allow you to resize without worrying about ratio. One simple trick is to hold down the command key, which will bring up the ruler and allow you to straighten your image as much as possible. I'm now going to crop into my drawing, like so. As close as you want. When you're done, press enter on the keyboard, which will commit those changes. I'm going to use the black and white color treatment, which will strip out all the color data. And I'm going to use the highlights, shadows, white, black, clarity sliders to adjust my image and get it as close to black and white as possible before bringing it into Photoshop. I'm dragging my sliders in opposite directions, which will allow me to create as much contrast as possible and make those black and white lines pop. I like to be a little bit pedantic and choose values that are incremented and even lots, which will make it easier to remember my settings. I'm pushing them in opposite directions to create contrast. You can also use the contrast slider, but I like to adjust these first and then use the contrast slider to adjust it afterwards. And the other thing I'm going to do is push my exposure up to get rid of some of that paper texture. But not so high that I lose the detail in my lines. I might push the contrast up a little bit higher and also drop the blacks a little bit more. Now you're doing this on a per image basis because of course every drawing is different. I think I want to bring those whites back down a little bit. The other thing I'm going to do is use the sharpening, uh, the detail palette here to sharpen it. I'm going to push my noise reduction to about mid 20s, color to early 40s and I'll push the sharpening up to between 50 and 60. I don't want to push it too far or else we'll start getting uh, some artifact in. Judging by that, I'm quite happy with how I've edited that. I'm going to press G on the keyboard now, which will return to the grid display of all the photos. I want to take this one here, right click, edit in, and choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. I've got CC, but yours might be CS6 or CS5. It's not that important, which you have. All right, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use my adjustment palette here with a little half white, half black circle. And I'm going to choose Levels. Levels is going to allow me to push my blacks and my whites and get rid of some of the extra detail that I don't need. So I'm going to cut some of that paper texture out here as much as I can. I may not be able to get it perfect. It depends on the paper and the, the style that you've drawn it in. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and scroll, which will allow me to get close into the drawing to see what effect my changes are having. So 
So I'm just going to play with the sliders until I get a look that I'm happy with, while still retaining as much detail as I can. Alright, I'm quite happy with that. The next step is I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select around the outside and and get rid of all this extra white stuff. I'm just holding shift and clicking wildly until I get as much of it as I can. Then I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool here with the additive mode selected and I'll roughly select around the outside of my drawing to get as much of the white area as I can. Alright, that's all that. Bit there. Some bits here. Now I'm not worrying too much about the inside areas of the drawing as they will actually just end up looking like part of the illustration itself. I'm going to use the paint bucket tool and a white foreground color to fill in my selection that I've made. And I'll press command D and you'll see that we have a white out, white and black drawing. When you've done that and you're happy, press Command S on the keyboard, which will save the document. Press Command W to close it to save on RAM. And return to Lightroom. See our drawing has now been converted into black and white. Now that we've got our edited image, I'm going to right click, choose export and then click export dot 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 I'm going to not resize to fit I already have a, a preset set up from the last tutorial called screen print setup and basically that's 100% quality JPEG at print resolution sharpened for matte paper and no resize options it's going to export it at maximum quality Click export, which will give me a dialog box. I'm just going to select this folder here. Click open. Now bring up Adobe Illustrator. Click file, open, or command O on the keyboard, which will bring up a dialog box. Navigate to where you've dropped the file. And then press enter. To open it, converting black and white drawing images into a screen printable format is actually extremely easy. I'm going to select my image, click image trace. OK. Now you say it, see that it's made it into a sharp black and white illustration. I may not like what I've done here, so I'm going to use the tracing options dialog box here, which will bring up a, a dialog. I'm going to click advanced options and I'm going to adjust these here to bring out as much quality as I can I'm not particularly worried about how many anchors anchor points there are if your computer's fast enough it shouldn't be an issue we're going to export it as a JPEG when we're finished anyway and that's it 
50% pars, 100% corners. And when you click expand, that will make that into editable pars, which you can color and play with. This is quite a scattershot method of converting images for screens, but if you like the look and you want to get that vector feel, then that's a good option. When you're done, I'm going to choose File, Export, and I'm going to select JPEG, Export, name it, own it like you stole it. I'm going to select a large as file as I can, print resolution, and OK. Now, if you navigate to where it's located in Finder, if you remember where that is, you'll see that it's created. black and white JPEG file that you can print out and then transfer onto a screen. As you can see, super simple methods for getting a look that will be easily screen printable. And I'll catch you back next time for another tutorial. Thank you.